everybody. Good to see everybody here. Fantastic. We are uh, a little leaner tonight. Right? A little bit, a little bit leaner. But, uh, appreciate everybody coming out. I know we have some online, but we've got a lot of our members at uh, camp. And so I talked to John and uh, Andy. Uh, I guess it was two nights ago, and they were camp is going well. Um, they said it was uh, it was hot, and uh, but everybody was well behaved, so uh, so that's good. And they're having a good as of Monday night, they were having a good night. So keep them in your prayers, uh, and let's continue to pray that they have a good, and fruitful week and a safe week. Uh, you never know what's going to happen with camp. So uh, it's going to be here. There's an adventure. Or somebody goes to the hospital. Or something happens. So. Thirty years. Oh. Yeah. And no oh. bugs. Uh, <laughs> they renewed their vows at the jail. Oh, that's correct. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Andy and Melissa. Remember also, uh, Robin Corners traveling uh, this week. So we're in Southern Illinois. That's it. I don't know of any other uh, prayer requests, but does anyone else have any announcements or prayer requests for this stuff? Corey in the prayer with his ankle. Corey with what? With his ankle. His ankle. Yeah. Bob and Diane, of course. And Marianne. And Marianne. And Marianne. <laughs> and David. <laughs> and David. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so tonight we have uh, Mark's going to lead us in prayer. Jonathan's got some songs. David has the devotional. And then Paul has the, the Bible class. So with that, we'll go ahead and have a prayer. salvation that we have from the sacrifice of your son Jesus and for your love for us and for his love for us. We pray that uh, you'll be with us tonight as we as we study another portion of the word, Lord, that you open our hearts to the study and that uh, things that we learn tonight will apply them to their lives. Thank you again for the opportunity that we have to be here tonight for this is a very Christ name. Start with 756. Number 756. <clears throat> I want to be a worker for the Lord. I want to love and trust His holy word. I want to sing and pray and be busy every day. Strong and brave. I want 
to trust in Jesus, proud to save. All who will truly come shall find a happy home in the kingdom of the Lord. I will work, I will pray. In the vineyard, in the vineyard of the Lord. I will work, I will pray, I will labor every day in the vineyard of the Lord. Sing one more song, number 608. 608. God's family. We're part of the family that's been born again. Part of the family whose love knows no end. For Jesus has saved us and made us his own. Sometimes we cry, sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs. Sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven. God's some go before us, we'll all meet again, just inside the city, as we enter in, there'll be no more party, with Jesus we'll be. Sometimes we cry, sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs, sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven. God's Jonathan. Mark, you're going to turn me up. So, can we play that song real quick? I asked uh, Jonathan and Mark, and fortunately Jonathan showed up because Mark and I couldn't figure it out. But there's a song that came out in the 80s from a group called Acapella, and they made millions of dollars singing acapella songs and putting out tapes and CDs and probably cassettes way back when. Um, but acapella had a song out and it was called everybody said but nobody did i'd like you to listen to just the words it's an acapella song there are some voices in there that make thumping noises and things like that so please excuse that for tonight but just listen to this song for just a second it's an interesting song and it drives my point home for my lesson <laughs> Everybody said that anybody could do the important thing somebody should do. Everybody knows that anybody could do all the good things that nobody did. Well, the preacher came to me and said, what I ought to do 
If I wanted to make my religion to he do it himself But he really didn't have the time He said that the duty was mine Oh no Everybody said that anybody could do it Not me Oh, somebody should do it Everybody knows that anybody could do All the good things that Papa did Why me? Everybody said that anybody could do it Oh no If you want to shut up You could Everybody knows that anybody could do All the good things that Papa did Well the deacon came by and said Give me a hand if you want me going to the promised land, here is something that I don't have time to do, so I better give it to you. Oh no! Everybody said that anybody could do. not me. Be about to do somebody oh, should do. Not everybody me. knows that anybody could do all the good things that Papa uh -uh. did. Not me. Everybody said that anybody oh, could do. No. Be about to do you want somebody a child, should do. Oh. Everybody knows that anybody could do. All the good things that Bob Buck did. Well, I'm too busy, so I tell everybody. The work's got to get done by somebody. It could be done by anybody, but nobody, 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 Everybody could do all the good things that Bob Buck did. Everybody said that anybody could do. Be able to do something. Everybody knows that anybody could do. Don't look at me. Everybody said that anybody could do. All the good things that Bob Buck did. Everybody said that anybody could do. All the good things that Bob Buck did. Everybody said that anybody could do. All the good things that Bob Buck did. All the good things that Bob Buck did. All the good things that Bob Buck did. Thank you, Jonathan. I I used that song as a introduction to my lesson. Uh, Mark Davis, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago did a lesson on all the good things happening at Lake Norman. And he had an exhaustive list. Well, over the last couple of weeks, I've been convalescing at home, basically, and uh, somewhat shut in. So I've um, been thinking about all the good things that have been going on at the Lake Norman congregation. Galatians 6, 9 and 10 says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap the harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. <clears throat> Stay, sit, heal. Y'all seen this card before? One of my smart aleck members of my congregation sent that to me. But I counted all the cards that were sent. You think about this for a second. There's about 65 to 70 of us here on a regular basis. That includes children and everybody else. Had over 20 cards sent to me while I was at home. Thank you. It's encouraging to read them. Your sense of humor is somewhat warped in some cases, which fits in just fine with us. But it, the point is, is that you took the time to write a card, and I thank you for doing that. My wife thanks you for doing that because it gives me something to do, but it also gives my daughter some mail to go get out of the mailbox. So you have, on a, on a, about a week ago, <clears throat> on Saturday, I came up here with one purpose, and that was to drive my trailer to the church building so that Ann could cut the grass. She's the best looking lawn care person in Charlotte, by the way. So Saturday morning, she said, I, I need to cut the grass at the church building. I said, well, Bradley's going to take care of me. She said, no, I need to go help Bradley. So we drove up here, and guess who we see? Betsy's here. She's checking on the bathroom. She's checking on a few things before she runs off to camp. <clears throat> Who else is here? There's a young man here helping his dad clean the seats. A young man, a young man here cleaning the seats. Well, Jonathan was cleaning the seats also, but he kicked Ann off the lawnmower so that he could go cut grass and let Ann finish dealing with Titus. Actually, I got to, I got to watch Titus, and I've got a lot of funny videos of Titus. But Jonathan said, I'd rather cut grass in the heat than Ann cut grass in the heat. Then Bradley showed up, and of course Titus had to go out there and make sure he was doing things exactly correct. <clears throat> Who cleaned the bathrooms last week? Have you noticed? They get cleaned every week. Somebody from our congregation cleaned the bathrooms. Who stocks the refrigerator with the drinks? Who stocks the refrigerator up at the White House with the drinks? <clears throat> Who does the bulletin? 
Every week the bulletin goes out, except for this week. I heard we're not going to have one this week because it can't. <clears throat> but every week the bulletin goes out. There was a little mix-up on the bulletin on the printer, and so Charlotte asked somebody, you know, can you run to Office Depot and pick these up? And that person said, no, I'll just print them at home. And so somebody stepped in and volunteered and took over that little task so Charlotte could get on the road to go to camp. <coughs> the carpet got cleaned. Did y'all notice? A lot of the stains are gone. Jonathan brought a sweeper from home and, and cleaned the carpets. I don't know how he did it, but he cleaned them. A lot of the stains are out of here, especially the center section that he had an opportunity to clean. So you can see Titus is enjoying himself, but it was on clean carpet that he was enjoying himself. At Carolina Bible Camp this week, I counted 20 people that I know from this congregation that are working at camp this week. That doesn't include Mike and Angie out of town moving their, their daughter. It doesn't include our, our youth that are enrolled at camp. But there's over 20 people at Carolina Bible Camp this week. <clears throat> Somebody did something. Was it you? Somebody brought someone to the doctor this week. I guess I should speed up these slides, shouldn't I? So there's Jonathan. I'm sitting here looking at him on my computer. I apologize. There's Titus and Ann. There's Jonathan on my lawnmower. Did a good job. The lines are almost straight. No, just kidding. And there's Titus telling Bradley how to do things and make sure he's doing things correctly. There are the bathrooms that got cleaned. There are the drinks that got restocked. There's our bulletin. There's Titus on the floor. And there's our graphic about Carolina Bible Camp. So I ask you some of these questions. Someone brought cinnamon rolls on Sunday to share. Was it you? Someone opened the door for me. Was it you? Someone watered the plants outside. Someone cleaned the building. Somebody cleaned the carpets. Somebody cleaned the chairs. Somebody changed burned out light bulbs. Someone planned the services. Someone taught class. Someone taught the little children. Someone did the bulletin. Someone filled in for singing. Gordon had a, a bum leg sat Sunday night, and somebody jumped in. I think Tom did it Sunday morning and Sunday night, didn't he? <clears throat> someone said something nice. If you stand in that back corner over there, you hear all kinds of crazy comments. But they're encouraging comments. They're uplifting comments. But if you don't have your ears open, you're not going to hear them. Several people hugged each other. Everyone was friendly. It was enjoyable to be at services this week. Did you enjoy it? Someone brought someone to the doctor this week. We had we have members of our congregation that couldn't get to the doctor, and I know at least three situations where somebody from the congregation stepped in where they could and took people to the doctor. And I know there's other cases where we couldn't help them out. Someone visited a shut-in this week. Someone worked on a problem at someone's home this week. Someone called our shut-ins this week. Someone texted or checked on a member this week. Several people called our visitor, not called out visitor, but called our visitor on Sunday. You know, we had a family of four that showed up Sunday night. They moved here from the Baltimore area, and they presented a card, filled out the card and everything, and David and Banu um, are new Christians, and they're looking for a church home, and we greeted them. They, were, they couldn't get out of here. They were some of the last people to leave on Sunday night. Y'all did a great job greeting those people. <clears throat> Someone called our visitor from last Sunday. Somebody emailed that visit, those visitors from last Sunday. Somebody did. Someone did. Was it you? Are you doing what you can do to help the congregation grow? I think for the most part, everybody is. I think there are things that you're just looking for the opportunity to help and to serve and to be an encouragement. And I applaud you for that. As I said, Mark did a f fantastic lesson 10, 15 years ago about all the good things that were going on at Lake Norman. And I've tried to copy it two or three times and I'm never going to do it as well as he did it. But there are a lot of good things going on at church. There are a lot of good things that you as members are doing. And we thank you for that. I mean, there's nothing more encouraging to be sitting at home and have somebody call you and go, uh, are you up moving yet? What are you doing? Why aren't you out moving? How come? How come? How come? And not badgering me, but encouraging me to get up and move and do the things I need to do to recover. But they're also offering prayers on my behalf. They're also offering thoughts and condolences, or not condolences, but thoughts and, um, well, condolences for Ann maybe. But they're, they're just encouraging, and I, and I appreciate that. Richard, on his way home, at least three times this week, has called me, what are you doing? 
How's it going? Praying for you. It's just encouraging as members to hear other people call each other and encourage each other. So that's my point of view for this week. So in the last two weeks, and it's been two weeks and two days since I had surgery, all that has happened that I've witnessed as a member of this congregation. What am I not seeing? I know there's more going on. You know there's more going on. So I encourage you as we close tonight to think about this verse one more time. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Thank you. And that's our lesson for tonight. I don't know where you want me to leave that, Jonathan. Paul, it's all yours. You can have it. Are you sure? Yeah, you're on. You're live. Am I? Sure? I don't trust you, David. <laughs> If you have your Bibles tonight, open your Bibles to the book of Matthew. I want to look at a couple of verses in Matthew tonight. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 1. Matthew chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Now, everybody knows this story. Everybody that's here and everybody that is, is listening online, everybody knows the story of John the Baptist. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do, do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, for I say unto you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. John the Baptist, we tend to think that John is our prophet. John is the prophet of Christianity. Have you ever thought of what else John is or John was? Who's the last prophet in the Old Testament? Last prophet in the Old Testament? Do you know that John the Baptist is a prophet to Islam? John the Baptist is a prophet to four or five major religions in this world today. They all recognize John the Baptist as being a prophet. All of them. John the Baptist has three shrines built in his name. One in Jerusalem, one in Damascus, and one in Sabistia. Two of those are Muslim. Only one Christian and two Muslim. The Muslims believe that John is the Baptist. John was the uh, a prophet, uh, John the Baptist, is mentioned by the Roman Jewish historian Josephus and revered as a major religious figure in Christianity, Islam, the Baha religion, the Drone faith, and Mahdism faith. All of these faiths recognize John the Baptist as being a prophet. So what else do they recognize? 
Do they recognize the Old Testament? Do they recognize other things in the Old Testament? Almost to the letter, the Old Testament that we are aware of is used in the Koran, is used in the Baha, or Bai religion, uh, the drone faith, and the Mahdiism. It's all in the Old Testament, and it's all used by all these people. And John is a major prophet in every one of these faiths, not just us. I did not know that until I got to doing some research. Jesus identifies John as Elijah who is to come. That is important. Remember that because some of these other faiths declare John to be Elijah. All right? Islam. John the Baptist is believed by Muslims to have been a witness to the word of God who would herald the coming of Asa al-Messiah, which is the Messiah, believe it or not, Jesus Christ. Muslims not only believe in John the Baptist, they believe in Jesus Christ. I did not know that. All Muslims are required to believe in John the Baptist. Not necessarily Jesus, but John the Baptist. John, Jesus, and Mohammed all are considered by God as acts of worship. Everything that you do in Muslim is considered an act of God if you're in right relationship to God. And the way you get there is by listening to John the Baptist and by Muhammad. Not Jesus, John the Baptist. The Muslims give Jesus and John the same respect. Because Jesus was born a miraculous birth, so was John the Baptist, if you read the text. His mother was beyond childbearing age, and his father was old. And so they give John the Baptist and Jesus the same respect. Matter of fact, if you look at it very closely, they give John a little bit more respect. The Druze faith, which is from Lebanon, Lebanese, the Near East, they emphasize purity and philosophy. And they believe that we're connected to God in everything that we do at all times. No matter what, we're connected to God at all times. They believe in reincarnation. And they believe that Moses, Jethro, Elijah, John the Baptist, Jesus, and Mohammed are all the same people. Now, I don't know exactly how reincarnation works because John and Jesus were both alive at the same time. I don't know how they get that, but this, they believe in reincarnation and all of these people that we know about in the Bible are all one person because they've been reincarnated and they just keep going. The Bayi faith comes from Iran. They believe in world unity. All human beings are equal no matter what. God's creation, responsible, uh, not, regardless of gender, race, national creed, should be respected and treated without prejudice. They believe in Abraham, Moses, Buddha, John the Baptist, Jesus, and Muhammad. We're not the only people that believe in John the Baptist or in Jesus, for that matter. The Madaism faith, they revere these people and believe in them, and they start out with Adam, Abel, Seth, Noah, Aaron. John the Baptist was the latest and the greatest prophet in their faith. No Jesus, no Muhammad. John the Baptist. All of these religions believe the following. 
John's birth was miraculous. He was born of elderly parents who, served, who never had been able to have children. The angel Gabriel announced to Zechariah, a Levitical priest, that he would, and they, this comes from the Koran, they believe that Zechariah was a Levitical priest, that he would have a son. Gabriel said this about John. He will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will, be, he will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. True to the word of God, Zachariah's wife Elizabeth gave birth to John. Almost word for word, what is in our Bible is in the Koran. Our Old Testament and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is Old Testament. They're before the death of Christ, the breath, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So there are the Old Testament. Uh, they were written by a Jew, about a Jew, to the Jews to prove the deity of Jesus. That's the reason they only go so far in most of these religions. They only do up to a certain point John the Baptist, and that's where they stop. Most of these religions go either up to John the Baptist and stop, or they go one more than Jesus, which is Muhammad. They do John the Baptist, Jesus, and then Muhammad. Jesus is not deity, no more so than John the Baptist, according to these religions. We, in this country, and in Europe, are the only people that see that Jesus is deity, and declare him as deity, as our Savior. Now, the funny thing about all of these religions, they believe in John the Baptist. He is a great prophet one of the most major prophets that they have. And according to a couple of them, the latest and greatest prophet that they have. What was one of John's major teachings? It was baptism. Do all these people believe in baptism? Not a one of them. How do you believe in John the Baptist? And they even call him John the Immerser, John the Baptist. They call him these names but yet none of them believe that he is Baptist, that he will baptize, that you belong, should belong or be baptized to get into the kingdom of God. They don't believe that. Baptism is not necessary in most of these religions. Belief in one God system is all that it takes. And you can be a Muslim or most of those that I can't pronounce. When John came preaching, John's lessons were very clear. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and be baptized for the repentance of the sins. Now, when you look at that, and the Sadducees and the Pharisees would not go down to be baptized, do you think that baptism was a new thing for the Jews? They'd never heard of baptism. Oh, yes, they had. They baptized on a daily basis. If you were a Gentile and you wanted to become a Jew, a proselyte, you went through a cleansing ceremony, and one of the things you had to do was be baptized. So baptism was not something new to the Jews. They were well aware of what was going on. It was just a new meaning as far as they were concerned. To be baptized by John, they had to admit what? Had to admit their sin. And the Sadducees and Pharisees couldn't admit that because they had no sin. They were right with God. They had no sin, so they could did not see any reason to be baptized. Paul chastised them for that. I mean, not Paul, but John chastised them for that. John, baptism, and the baptism that we do today are very different 
and the way things are. John's baptism was for a specific, very specific purpose. And remember, John's baptism was in the Old Testament. So what was his baptism for? His baptism was for the Jews only. Had nothing to do with us. This is a Jewish thing. John the Baptist was preaching to the Jews for a very specific reason. He was preparing the way for the Lord. And he said, I am here to prepare the way of the Lord. Repent and be baptized. Who was he speaking to? He was talking to the Jews. So the baptism that the Jews did and the baptism that we do are two entirely different things. Even though they were both for remission of sins, John's baptism was strictly for the Jews. Now, the reason I bring that up is this. Most religions in the world today, except Christian religion, believes the same thing. That baptism was for the Jews only. It does not include anybody else. Remember, John is the last great prophet, not Jesus. So his baptism is only good for the Jews. So even though they believe in John the Baptist, they don't believe they have to be baptized because that baptism was strictly for the Jews. Our baptism is for the cleansing of sins. When we're baptized, we're immersed in water. We're baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit for the remission of our sins. And Christ's blood covers our sins. When the Jews were baptized, they were forgiven of their sins, but they were remembered. They couldn't get rid of their sin. It was remembered. When you and I are baptized, we're done. Our sin is completely covered. The blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. We're done. We don't have to go back and be baptized again. We don't have to do this. We don't have to do that. We're done. And that's what the rest of the world, the rest of the religious world, does not understand is the fact that Christ died for us. He shed His blood for us and His blood covers our sin. Amen. We are baptized for repentance of our sins and we demonstrate the fact that we have been baptized and we rise up out of the water to walk in newness of life. Amen. No other religion in the world does this. They can just be Islam or whatever. And I don't know that they can be forgiven of their sins because they don't do baptism. The baptism of Christ was for, for, for fulfilling all righteousness, which goes beyond just repentance. We are cleansed of all our sin by His blood, and we are raised to walk in newness of life. We repent and are baptized for remission of sins, and we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, something that nobody, no other religion does. This tonight was just a lesson or, or really a... a bunch of information that you may not even need or won't. But just be aware of the fact that just because we have the Bible and we read the Bible, we are not the only people in the world that look at this Bible. We're probably the only ones in the world that look at the New Testament. But we're not the only ones in the world that look at the Old Testament. The rest of the world, no matter what religion it is, is based 
out of the Old Testament one way or another. We are the only people in the world that say Jesus is our Savior. Everybody else is Muhammad, John the Baptist, my goodness, my good deeds, my something. So if you go talk to people about the Bible, be aware of the fact that in 99% of the cases, they know the Old Testament. They may not know the New, but they know the Old Testament. Philip told the eunuch, when the eunuch was reading, going down the road, and he said, how can I, how can I know unless somebody helps me? And Philip started in the Old Testament and preached to him Christ. That's what we need to be able to do. Start in the Old Testament and preach Christ. Thank you. That's not mine.